Welcome back everybody, Sir Kraken here. Thank you for tuning in for another Power World video. Today I'm going to be going over the top 10 things that Power World does not tell you. But before we get into that, if you're not subscribed, please do so, as it really does help out my channel by letting me know what you want to see, and also helps the YouTube algorithm to push out more of my videos. And with all that being said, let's get cracking on the top 10 things Power World doesn't tell you. Starting with number 1, PALs can be assigned to stations. Each PAL when placed in your base will go into automatic work mode. This means they will do whatever tasks need done so long as they're suited for it. To assign a PAL a specific job, first it must be suited for that job. Flame balls, for example, cannot help with kindling because they have no flame powers. Once you find out which jobs your PALs are suited for, you simply pick them up with the F key on PC or the X key on Xbox, take them to the station you wish to assign them to, and throw them into it. This will change them from auto work mode to assigned mode, and they will not leave the station until you move them again. This is an extremely useful feature for when you find a PAL with a great passive stat and you don't want it wasted on menial tasks. You can assign this PAL to the station that it would be best suited for. This not only helps keep it happy longer, but it also helps you get the most out of your PAL workers, not slaves, not slaves. Number two, you can whistle to control your PALs on the fly. Many times you'll find yourself wanting your PALs to react certain ways on your adventures. While adventuring, you may want your PAL to go passive so they don't accidentally kill the new PAL you're trying to tame. Or you may want them to be on patrol, attacking anything that comes near. No matter your preference, at times they are defiant little tykes, just like all children, and they seem to only want to do what they want to do. You can mitigate this by using the PAL command wheel. To do this, your PAL can't be stored, obviously. Once it's out of storage, hit the number 4 key on PC, or click the right stick on Xbox. This will bring up the PAL command menu where you can set them to aggressive, which is great for a type of patrolling slash guarding mode, neutral, which helps if you only want them to attack things that are attacking you, or passive, great for when you like your PAL to be with you but not killing everything in sight. From the PAL command wheel, you can also pet and feed your PAL, which makes for great cute screenshots. Number three, your PALs can catch fire. Your pals will try their best to stick close to you while you're adventuring. This is great for being out and about, climbing cliffs and dungeon diving, however it can be a problem while you're at base. If you get too close to a campfire and your pal happens to stand on it, they will catch fire. This will not only hurt and possibly kill them, but this means they can catch any of your belongings on fire as well. The fire will go out on its own eventually, or you can use water pals or source of water to douse them faster. If they catch fire, and in turn catch your belongings on fire too many times, it can eventually cause your stations and building pieces to break, and all of your progress lost. Number 4. You can drown. I love that Power World has rivers, lakes, oceans, and everything in between. And if you're like me, you want to go swimming and explore the waters for those super awesome water pals. However, like most things in the game, swimming will drain your stamina. And although you can still slowly swim when out of stamina, you will begin to drown once your stamina tank is empty. If you can't scramble your way out of the water in time, you will drown. An annoying end to an otherwise great adventure. A bonus note though, your items will not drop in the water for you to retrieve, rather they'll drop on the nearest piece of dry ground from where you died. Number 5. Pals are lazy. Many pals are extremely useful at helping around your base with menial tasks. Some even have a great passive trait to make them work harder, faster, longer, and with a smile the entire time. However, ones without great passive traits, which is most of them, will try to do the least amount of work possible to get by. Lane balls, for example, are great at moving materials from the source to the chests. If you have multiple chests though, they will always choose the closest one to them for storing the items. A great way to counteract this is to place a chest near each workstation and ensure that each empty slot in the chest is filled with at least one material item. As long as the storage has no empty extra slots, they will only put in the items that are already found in the chest until each slot has a full stack. Number 6. Most pals have elemental strengths and weaknesses. All pals fall into elemental categories. This even includes neutral pals. And depending on their category, they are strong or weak against other elemental types. This is great to know before you battle, so you can plan accordingly and not accidentally bring a weak pal into a fight. The types of elementals are as follows. 
Dark creatures are weak to dragon and strong against neutral. Grass is weak to flame, strong against earth. Electric, weak to earth, strong against water. Water is weak to electric, strong against flame. Flame is weak to water, strong against grass and frost. Frost is weak to flame, strong against dragon. Dragon is weak to frost, strong against dark. Earth is weak to grass, strong against electric. And neutral is weak to dark, and is the only PAL type not strong against any other type. Although it is a lot to remember, the more you play, the more it will make sense. Pocket Pair did a great job of making each elemental type make sense in a way that's easy to grasp. And if all else fails, a little trial and error and your pals dying over and over will get you learning quickly which elements are which. Number 7. Humans can be captured. In a creature capture game, the thought of capturing anything other than a creature may not have crossed your mind. If you have a curious mind though, you've probably wondered if you can capture those pesky raiders that keep attacking your base. Good news, you absolutely can. And you're not just limited to capturing raiders, but any human you find. Be warned though, attacking or trying to capture a human is considered assault, and this will give you a wanted level. Failing to capture a human will not only give you a wanted level, but also cause it to increase with each failed attempt. When you're labeled as wanted, high level PIDF guards will spawn and use lethal force to bring you and your pals down. If you attack the guards that spawn, this will also increase your wanted level even more until they have spawned enough to eradicate you or until you escape. Escape, however, is not a guarantee as they will often follow you forever. Number 8. Lift Monk Effigies are extremely useful. While exploring, you may have seen or even picked up the Lift Monk Effigies, small green glowing statues shaped like a Lift Monk. You may have not known what to do with them or if they even had a purpose. You're in luck, they actually do. If you're a high enough level, level 8, and you have at least one ancient technology point, you can create a statue of power. Once you create it, you can use your Lift Monk effigies to either upgrade your creature capture skills or upgrade the stats of your pals. Each higher level upgrade requires more effigies. However, if you choose to upgrade your pals and you don't like the results, you can also use the Statue of Power to reset their skills to default. Number 9. Loot Chests Matter one of my favorite things to do in a new game, especially ones with open worlds, is explore. I love being able to swim behind waterfalls to find a hidden grotto, or climb a super steep cliff to find an NPC with a unique reward for making it all the way. Power World has tried to add this to their world. With all the different biomes and palaces scattered across the map, there has to be special loot scattered around as well, right? Well, you're correct. Not only can you find special pals by exploring, but you also come across random NPCs. Sometimes they'll be resting by a campfire after a long day's journey, or maybe they'll be hull up in a rinky-dink town. Often along with random NPCs, you can find merchants who offer special loot and even pals. And these pal merchants aren't just slave traders, they'll also pick up any pals that you accidentally left behind for too long. For a small-ish fee, you can reacquire your long-lost pals and be on your merry way. Besides NPCs, you can also find random loot in the form of notes, effigies, fruit, and chests. All having their own unique purpose and most are worth seeking out. Chests, for example, come in different colors or tiers, each tier representing a different quality of loot. In these chests, you can find an assortment of items like mega spheres to help capture higher level pals or medical brews. Some chests even require keys to unlock. These are the most sought after chests, but I'll leave the surprise of what's inside for you to discover on your own. And finally, there are random encounters in Power World. One thing I love in open world games is the random encounter feature. Power World also has random encounters in different forms. You may run across a traveling merchant, or they may even stumble into your base. You can also come across pals battling it out in a near all-out war because someone accidentally let a fireball fly. In most instances, pals will defend and attack each other if provoked, and can be killed by each other. Random encounters are not just limited to pals though. You can also stumble across raiders attempting to capture pals from time to time. You can choose to intervene and steal their capture, or maybe help them take down a tanky pal. Either way, it's a great chance to weaken pals and get one for yourself that you couldn't have otherwise, or to have humans weakened and snag one of them. And that was my top 10 things Pal World doesn't tell you list. If any of you know of any other hidden features or things that Pal World doesn't tell you, let me know down below in the comments. 
That's going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that YouTube stuff as it really does help the channel grow and helps me get out more of the content you want to see. Thanks again, and as always, have a fantastic rest of your day.